one. God spoke to me. They, they're turning away from me. So good to see you. United States of America. We all need to get back to God. Everywhere we go. All over the whole world, the United States and everywhere else. That's the best thing any of us can ever do is serve God. He's a mighty, 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 mighty God. Amen. And I do love him, but I, I didn't think about that when I thought, well, maybe I'm just going to bring it. That's not like God said. So anyway, let's all, let's all, and let's all be a witness to a lost and dying world and bring everybody that we possibly can in to serve God. I mean, I know we can't make people. Thank you, Father, for being with us this morning. You know, each and every one of us is here. You know our hearts and you know what we have need of. Father, as I speak this morning, don't let it be anything of me and everything of you. Let me say everything that you want said and nothing that you don't want said. Help us, Lord. Empower us, protect us, and guide us. Give us your wisdom and knowledge and understanding in all that we do. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 in the uh, message this morning as Becky puts up the first uh, scripture it'll be familiar Genesis 3 and 8 I'll start with that sometimes you have a text scripture but I've got several text scriptures that I'm going to use I want to kind of go in, in, in a, 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 a listing and trying to hear the flow of the Holy Spirit as he's flowing I want to stay in that flow. I want to speak as he wants 
is spoken. What we'll talk about this morning, a time, a time of prayer, a time for prayer. It's in, uh, I think you all will agree to with me about praying, how important prayer is. It uh, lets us know that, that uh, we have a Heavenly Father that cares for us. Just like what uh, Genesis 3 and 8 says, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. That tells us that there was some type of relationship that was going on between the Creator and the creation. God was looking for Adam and Eve because it was in the cool of the day. It appears that He came down and He, he, he had fellowship. He communicated. He walked with Adam and Eve. And uh, of course, with this scripture, it's referring to what had happened prior to that, that they went and hid themselves. Now, come on, folks, who could really think that they could hide from the presence of God? They thought they could hide from the presence of His voice, but they couldn't. God knew exactly where they were, but what, what, what God wasn't seeing, what the Creator wasn't seeing, is Adam and Eve in the position that He put them in as having dominion. They, have lost, they had lost that due to their disobedience to Eve being deceived and Adam being rebellious and doing what they did. They tried to hide themselves from God. God went looking for them. Aren't you glad when you mess up, when you make mistakes, or when you just do something that you know you shouldn't have done, but you have a repentant heart? Aren't you glad God comes looking for you? He comes looking for you. He comes looking for me. We, we're not out running and looking for Him. He's coming and looking for us right where we are. Now, we can try to go as to the farthest ends as a, or find some type of foliage and try to hide yourself. You can be a Jonah and try to, to go and, and to, from one end to the other, get on the ship, get on the sea, and try to sail as far as you can away from the presence of God. And no matter where you go or no matter where I go, we're always going to be where the presence of God is as long as we're alive up on this earth. Okay? As long as we're alive. There is going to be a time of great separation. I believe, I truly believe this according to what I read and studied in the Word of God. The greatest torment that a person can experience in that awful place called hell, and then finally in the lake of fire that, at, at Brimstone, is the eternal separation from their Creator. The eternal separation from God. That would be the greatest torment. Yes, there's going to be the flames, there's going to be the Brimstone, there's going to be other things going on around them. We know that there's torment, that there's uh, people being tormented because we have the account of the rich man that ended up in that awful place and he was trying to get Lazarus to, uh, for Father Abraham to send Lazarus to give him a, 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 just a touch of water, just a touch, because he says, this is a rich man's words, I am tormented in this flame. So we have to have a relationship. It's all about a relationship. And how do you have a relationship? How does a relationship is established? It's by communication. Prayer, in my belief, is one of one of the greatest attributes that God gave man. He built that into us that we have the ability to talk to Him. He, when He created us in His image and His likeness, according to Genesis 1:26, He said, "Let us make man." When He had man in mind to create mankind, He wanted a relationship with us from the very, very beginning, from the creation. He said, I'm going to create in them a, an ability. A, 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 basically what He said, I'm going to breathe the breath of life and they're going to be a living soul. Not just a spirit, but you're going to be a living soul. When you've got a soul and you've got a will, you've got an intellect, you've got a conscience, you've got a choice. And He built in and created in us a choice that we can choose to serve Him. We can choose to pray to Him. We can choose to have a relationship with Him. On the other hand, we can choose not to. It's our choice. You know, I've said that many times. But folks, we need to really get a hold of this. The power of prayer is so, so important. The power of prayer all through the Word of God shows what prayer can do. Yes, we say prayer changes things. And prayer does change things. But prayer is only hope that we have in this nation. Prayer is the only hope that we have as, hum as humanity. As, as we see the things that's going in the direction it's going in with all this artificial intelligence, this AI, everything going computerized, 
And they're going to start making, folks, less than five years, there's going to be hybrid people here. You know what I mean about hybrid people? There are going to be people with computer chips embedded in them. It's already, in, it's already in the process. It's in the experimental stage. But there's going to be people with electronic chips that makes them a hybrid human being. Okay? It's already started. And I'm not, I can't go there right now because I've got too much on this to talk about. But I'm just telling you, this is where we're going. It's going to take the power of prayer. If my people who are called by my name, we know who that is. We know who His people. He knows who His people is. He knows each and every one of us. And when we call on His name. Listen to 1 Peter 3 and 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. When, when I read that scripture, you know what just jumped out at me? When we're in a relation, worship with someone, you know our greatest desire, especially if we love that person and truly, dearly love that person, when we're in that type of relationship, you know what our goal is? Is to be with that person. To spend time with that person. If we truly love our Heavenly Father like we say we do, are we spending time as somebody in a loving relationship would spend time with someone? Because I tell you what, when I met Robin, I put aside a lot of different things. I did. Things that I used to do, things I wanted to do or thought I wanted to do, but I put those aside. Even things that, that I enjoy doing, spend time with her. I want to be to the point where I push things aside and I spend time with my Heavenly Father. Because my love for Him is much greater. All of our, you know, we, God has blessed us with, He's blessed us with spouse. He's blessed us with someone to, to love and to love us. But folks, if there's ever someone that we better have a relationship with, that is our Heavenly Father. We must make time. Don't try to take it because you'll never find it. But you make, you set aside time and you spend with Him because He's looking for you to spend time with Him. He's looking, for, I'm going to say it again, He's looking for you, He's looking for me to spend time with Him because He loves us and He created us to have fellowship with Him. Sometimes if we, you know, I wish that I knew as a young Christian growing up, uh, I, I and I've got to, Lord, help me to say this. We have a way of praying in our own way. Okay? We have a way that we pray, and the Lord does hear us. There's no doubt about that. Each and we're, in, we're individuals, and, and, and as individuals, we have uh, everything that's just so unique to us. You know, we've talked about the seven characteristics the fingerprints, the DNA, the retina. In our skin, we, we've got. Uh, a dental, a dental imprint. We got things that specifically identify us as a unique individual, unique person. And the Lord, when you think about it, with our handprints and our palm prints, when we throw our hands up to worship the Lord, you know what? He, he recognizes every one of us individually. Amen. Individually. Because He created it. He, cre he identified it. He knows our voice you know, we have a voice pattern that they I can identify whether it's you or not speaking. There, there's, there's, there's called a voice pattern recognition. It's technology out there that can say that is the person speaking even though they've got it recorded. Because we have a voice pattern. Think about it. we got retina, right? In our eyes, they do retina scans because it is secure because there are patterns in your, your retina and mine that can only identify us. Think about how magnificent and how wonderful our Heavenly Father is and how much He wants us to have a relationship. When we lift up our hands, we lift up our eyes, we lift up our voice, and hey, Heavenly Father, we cry, Abba, Father. We cry, Heavenly Father, my Daddy. Lord, I'm coming to You and I want to speak to You and I want to praise You and I want to honor You. He knows without a doubt, 100%, who He is speaking to or who's speaking to Him. Because of the way we are created. However, James 4 3 says, You ask and you receive not because you ask amiss, that ye may be may, that ye may consume it upon your lust. That word amiss, it really, I hadn't really studied that because I wanted to know 
If I'm asking and I'm not receiving, why I'm not receiving? Because my Heavenly Father loves me. I'm talking to Him. He's, he's talking to me, speaking to me through His Word. He's speaking to me through His audible voice. He's speaking to me in different ways. Why am I not getting or receiving? That word amiss is because I've been asking wrongly. I've been asking improperly. Can we... You mean to tell me when we pray, there's a way that we can pray that it's not the right way to pray? According to James, that's what he's saying. Why are we... We're praying, but we're not receiving. Why are we not receiving? It's because we're doing it improperly or wrongly. Folks, we, we've got to make sure that when we're praying, we're praying just as He has laid it out in His Word. And we're going to talk about that as we move right on down. And here's one of the number one reasons I think, I think, this is me, I think, that, and I'll speak for me, that I need to do to get to make sure that I'm not asking amiss. The next scripture is James 4 and 8. We almost quoted. Draw an eye to God, and He will. Who, does, who has the first step in this? If we draw nigh to God, this is the first step, folks, of making sure that we're doing the right thing. We've got to draw nigh to Him. We've got to come to Him. We've got to, we've got to come, and, and I've got the Scripture down, that we have come boldly to the throne of grace, that we can receive grace and help. We, we can receive what He's got for us. We can step in boldly, but it takes a drawing close to Him. Because if we draw close to Him, He's going to draw close to us. The, in, in, uh, Becky, I'm going to go run on down a little bit. James 5.16 says, Confess your faults to one for another. Pray for one for another that you may be healed. And this is where I want to be. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual is the powerful and the fervent is the, is the expressing or the repetitive prayer of a righteous man. When we go to the Lord, we believe that He's going to hear us. We believe He's going to answer us. We believe also when we speak it, we speak it out because we have confidence that it's going to be done. Well, that's, that's part of that speaking boldly or approaching the throne boldly. You know, it's not coming in all week and, and just, you know, Lord, do you, he's, he's not up there to, to, to do something bad to us. He's not trying to, to cause us to, to fret and worry because saying He's just not approachable. Our, our God's not approachable. Sometimes we, we think he, he, He's a gotcha God that uh, He's looking for us to do something wrong so He can point it out to us. Or He's uh, he's out there with maybe a, a switch or some people don't know what a switch is or, or a, a belt to, for correction. Oh, yeah. there. And uh, I, I've had my share of that. Boy. Uh, the, the belt and the switch, people don't understand. He's not out there doing that. He's, he's in His... He's in the heavenly realm. He's listening to us. Our Holy Spirit here is with us. He is inside of us. The Holy Spirit hears us and He relates the Word to the Father as we speak it. That's why sometimes we don't know how to pray. Sometimes we don't know what to pray for. That's when the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. He steps in and He says, pray in this matter. He said, he said you speak, you open your mouth and I feel it. When we, have, when we don't know what to say, when we don't know what to speak, when we don't know what to ask, He says, open your mouth and let me fill with the words. One important act of, of prayer of worship is prayer. I want you to think about it. One important aspect of worship is prayer. When we do pray, we do have expectations. We do, have, we do say, Lord, can I expect this? Number one, I'm praying to God. Not just a God. I'm praying to the God of gods. I'm praying to the true and the living God. I don't have an idol over here. I don't pray to a microphone. I don't pray to a, to a speaker. I don't pray to a wooden image. I don't pray to some idol out here that can't talk. I'm praying to a, a true and the true and living God that can speak to us when we speak to Him. Somebody, you know, and I've heard people say this. I tell you what, I, I pray and I read and I study and I, I do this and I do that, but I just don't hear from God. Folks, if you're reading His Word, you're hearing from Him. When you open the Word of God, you're hearing from, from the Lord. That's His Word and He's speaking to you. You don't realize sometimes how deep that that, that, that Word goes when you read that Word. That's why it's good when we read it out loud and we say those words out loud. That Word gets in us. And we get in the Word, the Word gets in us. 
And, and He starts working on us. He starts breaking down things, that, that, that barriers and things that need to be broken down. If, but also in the other hand, thing, if things that have us bound, it starts breaking those chains. It breaks those, those things that's got us so, so bound up or wound up. You know, you can sometimes sit down with the Word of God and start praying, study prayerfully. And folks, that's how you study. That's how you enter the Word of God is you do it prayerfully. Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to set this aside of time to study and read your Word. Open up my understanding. And let me understand and know what I read. It's, pray, it's prayerful. You're reading to receive and to understand what God has for us. And we know that He's there. We know that we have a need for God to hear us and to, that as we're speaking. God, and we know that God hears our prayers. This is the expectation. And is God is going to hear us when we speak and when we pray. And God's going to answer our prayers because God loves us. He loves His creation. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show you great things you know not of. I will answer you if you call, if you speak. Psalms 86, 6 starts, Give an ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplication. I'm going to go back up there, back to 1 Peter 3 and 12. When I read that, I see that the eyes of the Lord. The ears are the eyes of the Lord are over the rights. The ears are open to their prayers and the face of the Lord. You know, when we when we were created in the image and the likeness of God, it talks about the eyes of the Lord, the ears of the Lord, the face of the Lord. We're talking to someone that created us, but also we're talking to someone that has the same attributes of the image that we're. So folks, we're, having, we're, in a, we're in a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And we need to, we need to, to think of it that way. You know, it's, it's sometimes because we read the King James Version of the Bible because it's got the these and the thous and the yees and, and all that, 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 that type of English at that particular time, that we have to speak that way. We just need to go to Him and approach Him just like we're speaking to and giving reverence to a Father. Father that cares. Gracious Father, thank you so much for being here. And, we, and, and, and speaking His Word to us, Father, I know that things are impossible to us, but with you, Father, all things are possible. Speaking the Word as we're praying the Word. It's on day 6-7. In the, in, in the day of my trouble, I can call, I call upon thee, and thou wilt answer me. Amongst the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall give glory to thy name. And then the, the, uh, Hebrews 4.16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy to find grace and help to help in the time of need. Folks, the power of prayer is what we need to really get a hold of and really understand. Especially the power that we've got in, in us through God. The only power we've got is through its God-given power. Through prayer, being able to speak to Him and communicate to Him. But then, when He said in His Word, when two shall agree on anything. When, when you and I come into an agreement about prayer, folks, that just takes prayer to a different level. It, take, it lets us know that there is an agreement in prayer that when more, if we look at one person, one person's prayer, and look at Moses when he stood in the gap for Israel, when, when, when they had sinned and when they had been in, in such turmoil and everything going on, and God finally says, I'm tired of it, I'm going to read, Moses, get out of the way, I'm going to wipe them out, I'm going to start all over with you. Moses stood in and said, Lord, if, if you're going to, and he starts to pray, and he basically says this, he says, if you're going to wipe them out, take me out too. And God says, no, I, I know who and when I need to do what I need to do, and I'm using my words for this. And Moses starts interceding, and he starts praying, and he prays the prayer, and, and he asks the Lord to spare he said, he said, Lord, he said, Lord God, I'm the one that's dealing with these down here. You're hearing the grumblings. You're hearing the complaints that they're doing. But I'm actually down here dealing with them. And the prayer that Moses prayed, one man saved that nation. Saved the children because of his prayer for the heavenly Father. Folks, we've got a nation that needs saving. 
We've got family. We got friends. We got neighbors. We got acquaintances. We got work. What we call a work family. You know, in areas where you work, you got a group that, that uh, work together. It's called, what we call a work family. Folks, we've got complete strangers out here we've never met that need salvation. Right. That needs needs for us to be praying because we know to pray. Mm -hmm. I I would just about guarantee. I'll just leave it at that. I'm just about guarantee. Every one of us here today in this building, we're here because somebody prayed for us. Amen. Amen. Somebody called out our name in prayer. It could have been a family member. It could have been a, mom, a parent. It could have been a grandparent. It could have been an aunt and uncle. It could have been a cousin. It could have been a close friend. It could have been a work family member. And folks, it could have been a complete stranger. I know I have, I play for pray for complete strangers that I had not a clue, clue who they are. They have no clue. And I said, Lord, you want you to protect and bless them. Let them know who you are. Let them know the power of salvation and repentance. Show them, Lord, call them, bring conviction. I've said things like that, praying for people that I, I, I have no clue who they are. But the, the, the power that we have in, in praying to a, the true and living God. We have power in prayer because of the power of God. That's why we have that power. It's, it's not us, but it's us uh, invoking the name of our Heavenly Father and praying in the name of Jesus and speaking by faith and believing that what we speak and what we're praying for is going to happen. Now, some people say, well, I prayed for it and it didn't happen. Well, I don't, number one, it could have been a no. We could have prayed and asked something we thought about that we might need it or that we just wanted. We asked the Lord a direction and it may be a no. None of us, I, I, well, speak to me, I don't like to be told no, especially if I think I need something or want something. You see, there's a great big picture out there that we don't see. And he sees it in a realm where he is and he, it's right in front of him. We see right now. There's none of us sees 30 minutes from now. An hour from now or two hours from now. We don't even see tomorrow, next week, or next year, next month, or next year. But he sees that. He's in that realm where he, he's, he's, he sees. And if we're asking for something today that might be detrimental to us one week, one month, one year down the road, if, if, as much as he loves us, if it's going to be bad for me, it might look good right now. It might be good at this point, but what happens in the future that we can't see? Sometimes a no or, a, or a, not even an answer, sometimes I believe is the answer if we're looking specifically for something. Because, again, he sees the big picture. We can only see what we know or think for right now. We have to understand that he loves us so much that he's not going to set us up for failure. He's not going to make us do, give us something that he knows that number one is going to be harmful, but number two, it's going to be uh, something that it may be, it may not be a physical thing. It may be just something a mental thing that I, boy, I wish I had, I wish I had prayed for that. I wish I had asked for that because it's really making me uh, very anxious. It's really causing me a lot of headache and worry. I think about Carl. That uh, somebody was here preaching one time about a car. And he looked at that car and he said, I'm going to claim that car in Jesus' name. It's one of them big, nice cars that, that, that he said, this is my dream car. This is what I want. And he went and bought it. Well, I, I can't remember if it was six months to a year later. Worst mistake I ever made. It cost me even more than I paid for to get rid of it. Because it was nothing but a headache for me. It was nothing but a worry for me. See, folks, we can see things we want. We can see things that we think we, we need or we just have to have in my dream and this. And finally, it's like, you know, maybe it wasn't. Maybe I didn't pray long enough. Maybe maybe I prayed amiss. Maybe I didn't pray uh, rightly or, or maybe I prayed improperly. Maybe I didn't ask the Lord the right way. I wanted because I wanted Because I wanted what I wanted. See, every, every good gift, according to James 1.17, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. 
one of my favorite scriptures, I've got so many I can't just pick out one, is that uh, thy God shall supply all. As Paul says, your God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Now, if we break that scripture down and look at he, everything that we have need of, he's going to supply for us. Sometimes we like to add to that. We like to think that, well, I, I need this plus. I need this and, 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 and that'll work. But he's, he's going to add everything we have need to us. And then the blessings of the Lord make us rich and it adds no sorrow. What I found out, and I thought other people have found out through testimony and through hearing them speak is, if I try to make the riches myself and do it my way, then I end up seeing that there's headaches and sorrows to those blessings that I have. But also, if I think if, the, if I do it the Lord's way and say He maketh rich and adds no sorrows. When the Lord blesses with His, there's no sorrows attached. Because all that's been removed. See, there's, there, there's no headaches, no sorrows, no worries in His blessings. But when we get take get, take the whole of something ourselves and we try to do it, then we've got to try to figure it out and work it out. And that's one thing that, that, that mankind has. We, we've been kind of structured that way. Because we, He gave us dominion. He said, you have dominion over the earth, over the, the, the uh, uh, beasts that creep, the, the birds that fly, the fish, everything. We've got dominion in us. And guys, you're, you're all, we're all the same on this part of it. When something's broke, we try to fix it. If something's not right, we try to fix it. We try to make it. And when we can't figure it out, we make it out. Sometimes we back up and say, Lord, fix this. I know it should come to you first. How do I, how do I fix this? And look, so many times, it's almost like if I'd have just I'd saved myself one day, two day, five days of worry, if I'd have just went to you first. Amen. And he would show me exactly how to take care of it. And it is just like, well, I, I brought it on myself. That's where I take what his blessings and I try to work it out myself. And then the other part of that is we take something that, you know, we say, bring it to the Lord. The Lord says, you know, I'll take the burden, I'll take the heavy load, bring it to me. We'll come to the altar and we'll pray, and it doesn't happen like in the time frame that we, we think it is. And we're talking to Him and say, Lord, work this out, Lord, work this out. And it's almost like we're pleading and we're begging instead of turn it over to Him and walk away. I know that's hard, it's easier said than done. But the worst part about it is we'll give it that, we'll put it on the altar, we'll lay it down, we'll walk away, and then we'll find ourselves just slowly going back and burning this land. Yeah, it's not done quick enough, and you pick it back up and you try to fix it yourself that you've already messed it up. But you're still trying to work it out and still let the Lord take care of it. Because He He can take care of everything, folks, in our life. He knows us and He knows what it takes to take care of us. In Ephesians 3.20 it says, Now to Him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Our prayer, prayer, prayers must be accompanied with effort and work. Folks, we, it's like our faith. We can have that, all the faith. We can have so much faith and sit with our arms crossed and nothing happened. Well, I've got faith. Nothing is happening. I've got faith. Nothing is happening. But are you putting your works with your faith? You can't just sit back and do nothing and expect God to do everything. And I think we, we make that mistake sometimes because we pray and say, Lord, take care of this. And it's like, yeah, we're, we're letting take care of it, but we've got to have Him do something. Think about it. Think about this, folks. Think about a farmer. I've got 80 acres out there that I'm going to put a garden. It's going to be right there. And I'm going to start tomorrow morning. I'm, 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 I'm believing. And he goes to the Lord and he prays. He said, Lord, I believe that field right out there that I've got 80 acres. Tomorrow morning I'm going to have a garden out there and it's going to produce so much abundant that I'll be able to feed so many in my community. It's going to do ex exactly what I believe it's going to do. It's going to produce. Tomorrow comes. The next day comes. Next week comes. Next month comes. Three months later, he walks out and he says, Where's my garden? <laughs> he's sitting in the house. He's going, 
you know, probably thought when I prayed and asked the Lord to bless my garden, I probably should have went out and plant and, and tilled up the ground. I probably should have planted what I wanted, grow corn, grow bean. I should have done all this stuff as long as I prayed. Sometimes we think we can just ask and it's just going to happen without us doing anything. That, that promotes laziness or slothfulness yeah. in the Bible. And, and the Bible speaks very harsh about being slothful or lazy. Yeah. We believe something's going to happen, but we still got to do our part. Yeah. I'm working in a company and I'm working forever, and, and I just I just need to raise, I need more money. I, need, I like my job, I like what I'm doing. I just need more money. I need to be able to do this. Are you taking advantage of any overtime offer? Are you doing the above, the little extra that it takes uh, instead of saying, well, that's not my job. That needs to be done, but that's not my job. See, what you don't know is that may not be your job, but you go over and take care of it anyway. Even from picking up a least piece of paper on the ground that's called trash and putting it in the garbage can as you walk by instead of walking on by. But what you don't know is the su your supervisor or the manager is looking over and watching what you do, and they're making notes, and finally he goes to the CEO and says, you know what, well, so-and-so, they're doing above and beyond. No, they're not just doing a good job, they're doing above and beyond. I'm going to put them in for a raise. See, Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, you know where promotion comes from according to the Lord From the north. It says from the north. Promotion comes from the north. We know where the north is. It's where the father is. And you see, you pray and you ask the Lord, but you do you do your part and let him do his. That he can put it on the heart of somebody to say, you know what? Take a look at that person. Watch what they do. Watch that employee. Watch how hard they work. Or what, look how you're, you're in a job that does it that's all about public relations. You deal with the public. And you start treating people with kindness, with respect. They're standing there and they're giving it to you. I mean, stuff on the feet to the hands on the hips to pointing the finger at you. And you can stand there with a smile or sit there with a smile saying, I understand what you're saying, but this is the way that it works. And you, you take time to explain to somebody. They may not like it and they may still turn around and walk out mad, but you know what? You treat them with respect even though they didn't treat you with respect. And your supervisor sees that. And the Heavenly Father puts it on their heart for you, for them to say, you know what? Look, look how they treated somebody else. Look how they treated this person or that person. Look the way that they're, they're uh, speaking to them in a calm, laid back voice. It all can change, folks. But the way we pray and the way we, we approach the throne is the words we say. And, and, and giving him reverence that he so deserves. I'm looking just to see to make sure. Yeah, let me, let me go on down this. I've got so much here, but I, I'm, I'm trying to use my time wisely. Knowing, let's see. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Let's go on to that, page. Knowing this very thing is what led the Lord's disciples to say. Lord, teach us to pray. And it came to pass that as He was praying, this is the Lord Jesus, He was praying in a certain place. When He ceased, one of the disciples said to Him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught His disciples. And He said this unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, called be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, I'm repeating it instead of reading. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so on in earth. Yeah. Give us day by day our daily bread. When, when we say give us this day our daily bread, we're thanking Him for what He's for his provision, what He's providing for us. And uh, Forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And we seem to say, for thine is the kingdom and the power of the Lord forever. And then he goes on to say, after he teaches and the prayer goes on to say, he says this way, he said, if you'll ask, and if you'll seek, and if you'll knock, 
<coughs> it's in, in when you ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Our prayers must be in that in, in that manner of we ask, the folks we just keep on asking. He wants us to keep approaching him and keep talking to him and asking. Him. <coughs> keep on seeking because it's in a continual motion. We continue to ask, we continue to seek, we continue to knock. And so these things can be opened up to us and be given to us just as we're, we're praying and asking Him to do this. When we acknowledge the Father, when we say, Our Father who art in heaven, what are we doing? We're acknowledging we have a Father in heaven and He is our Creator. What do we do when we speak that word, uh, Hallowed be thy name? That is given a, an, an acknowledgement of consecration, of, of, of your name is sacred, your name is holy, and I'm reverencing your name. And your kingdom come and your will be done as it is on heaven, as it will be on earth. Father, we thank you for the food that you're providing for us each and every day. And the forgiveness that, that you give to us for our sins. And in turn, that teaches us to forgive others and as you forgive others. Help us not to be led into temptation, but Father, deliver us from the evil one. We've got an enemy out here, folks, that each and every day is, is, is looking at his influences and his, his little uh, uh, unclean spirits and demonic influences that are out here that's looking for a way to accuse us and point the finger at us and trying to tempt us and trying to set little traps and, and trying to entice us and trick us into doing something. And we just, when we pray, we just say, Lord, help us. He, Jesus gave them a give, gives us a guideline as He gave those disciples. He said, "Here's the He said, "Pray in this manner." He didn't say pray using these words or the word. He said, "Pray in this manner." We acknowledge the Father, who He is. We, we acknowledge how sacred, how holy His name is. We acknowledge that His kingdom should be here on earth as it is in heaven. We acknowledge that He provides our daily bread, our substances, our food each and every day. He forgives us, and in turn, He teaches us that we can forgive others, and we have to forgive others. It help us that we're not brought into a way and led down a stray road of temptation, and then there's an evil one out there that's trying to cause us harm, trying to get us in something that He has set up to trick us into believing this is right, but it's absolutely wrong. We're asking these things when we pray by using a pattern that He showed us how to pray. When we use that pattern, when we use that outline or that guideline to pray, we're praying and asking Him, but we're acknowledging Him all the time. That's our Heavenly Father. If Jesus prayed. Folks, if Jesus prayed, don't you think we expect Him to do He prayed. He made time to be with His Father. And here, here's, the, here's the thing I think we miss a lot of times. See, Jesus was off to Himself. He was actually praying actually to the Father when the disciples said, teach us to pray as John taught His disciples to pray. Teach us to pray. He, was, he had made time for the Father and He was praying to Him. What Jesus does, or, or what He did here on earth is this. He prayed to the Father. And we, we use this word, and this is an old, uh, I believe it's a Pentecostal word. Prayed up. We, pray, we get prayed up. We get to come in here into the the house of God, we get to get filled up, we get prayed up, we go out and we exercise and do what we do out here in, in the earth, or in, in our jobs and different things. But what I'm saying is, Jesus prayed and he starts going out, he's walking down the streets, he's walking and doing different things, and then all at once a need rose over here. Somebody needed to be healed, somebody needed to be delivered, somebody need, needed a, 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 a touch from, from whatever it was. You know what he did say? Wait just a minute. Let, let me pray. He had already prayed. He was prayed, and all he had to do was walk over and say, "Your sins be forgiven. Take up your bed and walk. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Your sins are forgiven. So as your faith is, so it be unto you." He had already prayed. He got the answer. He got everything he needed. And when the need arose, he didn't have to stop and pray. I'm not telling folks that, that we, we need to quit we need to quit praying for people. I'm not saying that because the Bible talks about us 
you know, when the, there's the, someone is, if there's any sick among you, call for the elders of the church, anoint them with all, pray the prayer, the prayer of faith in the name of the Lord. We're supposed to do that. But if we've already prayed and somebody comes up here, all they have to do is say, listen, I've got something going on. I need prayer. I've already prayed about it. I want you and my, your faith and my faith to be joined together. And let's just speak it out. Jesus prayed, but then He spoke out what He prayed already. See? And when people come up and we, give, we pray for people, we pray the Word, for by your stripes you're healed. For by His stripes we are healed. Father, I know that things, that things may look impossible here, but we do know according to Your Word all things are possible. We're praying, but we're speaking His Word as we're praying. See? Or the Bible says, for any two shall agree. We're agreeing, you're agreeing. There's several here that's agreeing. We're agreeing that that need would be met in Jesus' name. It's not all about the words and how many you can speak and how many you can say. It's about the power of the words that are spoken. Jesus, you know, sometimes, you know, when He come up on the unclean spirit, all they knew Him. Isn't that something? His people couldn't recognize him, but surely they made it's good. And he said, Son of the Most High, are you here to destroy us? Are you here to torment us before our time? And then, you know, there was a conversation there. And they said, Permit us to go into the swine. You know what Jesus said? One word. Go. Go. Wouldn't it be much simpler for us if we were praying? If something happened, and we can say, be healed, be touched, be removed. Whatever you're praying about, we're, we're agreeing on, that it's going to happen in Jesus' name. It's quick, simple, to the point. There's a time, folks, though. There's a time, I know. There's a time we labor in prayer. We, 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 we go into our prayer closet. I like the way the movie calls it. The, the, the Christian movie that was out there called The War Room. Yeah. Sometimes you go into your prayer closet, but sometimes you need to go into a war room so you can battle. Because it's spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. and we, we need to designate a place where we can pray and have that, have that type of prayer, have that type of spiritual warfare that we can go in. And you can boldly approach the throne of grace. You can pray in that outline, My Father who art in heaven, hallowed and, and blessed and honored and be your name. I'm so, I feel so privileged to be able to come before you. It starts out in, in a manner of, of, of acknowledgement. It starts out in a manner of, of praise and, 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 and giving Him honor, and Lord. And then you start, you start saying, "Lord, this is what." And, and here's the other part about that too. He knows before we speak what we're going to speak, but also He knows and He wants us to know the power of the spoken word when we pray. Yes, we can pray silently. We can pray without speaking. But folks, words is just like speaking in an agreement. Words are powerful. Words are, you know words are spiritual? Think about it. If you think about it, words are spiritual. We can't, we can't see the spirit world. I'm telling you what, we can sure feel it. We can't see the wind. But we can feel it. We can see the results of it when we see the trees and the flowers and everything. Lord, our words are powerful when we speak them out. Yeah, I just, I'll touch on it, but I can't say on it. In the creation process, the Creator didn't take His tool belt and two befores. And grass seed and start sowing and building. He stepped out according to Job and he hung the earth on nothing. And he said, Let there be. And God said, And God said, Power of the spoken word. God speaks it out and it happens. And then he makes a creation in his image and his likeness. Let us make man. Just 1.6. Our image and our likeness. He says, you have dominion. Right. You have all the, you, you have everything that I have here on earth except ownership. 
God's the owner of the earth. It's all God, God says the earth and the fullness thereof is mine. But dominion means you're going to run it, you're going to manage it, you're going to take care of it. And you've got and he said, he told Adam, he said, whatever animal you name and you call, that's what it is. Right. See, God's intent was for Adam to do what he did. Speak to a problem, speak to something, and it'll be done. That's the original intent. But when man did it his way, nothing, nothing happened when he spoke, but what he had to do was work at the sweat of his brow to get something to work. Like what Adam should have been able to speak and say, that's the way it should be done. See? But that teaches us the power of work. The power that we have by speaking. That's why God wants us to approach Him and speak to Him and tell Him. Because you're speaking this in the atmosphere. So it's one thing I'm moving on. I'm just about done right now. When part of the ge is geology study of rocks, ge geology study of rocks and formations. They were studying an area there was a, that they believed was hundreds of thousands, could have even been millions of years old. But when they started studying that, and they started putting these, these, I don't know what the name of these instruments are, but these instruments can record echo and can, and can record sound. And uh, they said that they could actually hear inside that formation before it ever, before this formation ever uh, became solid when it was almost like a liquid mass, it contained a sound. And it sounds like voices. And I had a, a professor, he, he taught physics, he was telling me about this. And I said, well, the Bible talks about that. He looked at me and he said, I said, yes. So the Bible talks about exactly what you're talking about. Oh, well, what, what are you talking about? I said, Jesus said, if he didn't get the praise that, that he should be getting, he said, even the rocks are going to cry out. He looked at me and just kind of smiled. It's like, they, are, they just now recorded something or found out that they were record something that there was voices or, or, or echo sounds in these rock formations, but in the Bible all along. He talks about the rock being able to cry out. Hallelujah. If they just get their instruction now, that's good stuff. If they, the, what is it that the, they say the basic instructions are for leaving here or a Bible, B I B L E. I'm going to stop here, but the importance of prayer is what I want to, to get across this morning, and I believe this is what the Lord wanted. I, I've thought about this for, for a while. I've been meditating on it, I've been reading. And it's like the importance of right now of prayer. And when it's here, uh, we need to be in prayer as much as possible. The Bible talks about, about praying always. Any, and I believe what he's saying is pray always at every opportunity to pray. And you get an opportunity to pray. Uh, I, I know that Glenn, I believe it was, talked about somebody that prayed every 15 minutes. If you, if you was around it. Uh, Brother Walter Duncan intersection. Well, Brother Walter Duncan, I've heard my dad. My dad went and visited him several times and there in Olivelle, and he would do the he same thing him. every 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you stay, if you went to visit him and you stay longer than 30 minutes, it's time to pray. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just like every 30 minutes to pray. So, I mean, he, he what I'm saying is there, there was, there, and he, they felt an urgency and a time pray as much as they could pray. And when we pray and we enter the presence of the Lord and we, when we go into that realm of prayer, we're talking to the Creator of the universe. We're creating... He, he's all, our Heavenly Father. He's, he's Almighty God. He is the one that, that owns everything and, and we, folks, He's the one that we owe everything to. Even, even our lives, ourselves, because we've been bought with the price before you believe it. And Jesus paid that price. We couldn't pay it. But he paid it. He paid a debt that he didn't know because we owed a debt we couldn't pay. And he paid it for us.
And folks, we should be talking to him as much as possible. As much as possible. Is everybody stand? supposed to pray the word. I think we're supposed to. You know, the Psalms, we read the Psalms, but you know what Psalms are? The Psalms. They're Psalms. Psalms were meant to be sung. Psalms. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You just open the book of Psalms and just start saying it. And give me credit. Because Psalms are, are, are praising for the Lord. And acknowledging God what He has done for the Psalms and for us. We'll give everybody an opportunity to pray. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior at this point, right now would be a perfect opportunity. I know when I went to the altar for salvation, I had no idea how to pray. One thing I knew was I would go to the altar, something was going on inside of me, and I just needed to help. And as soon as I stepped up there, I had two or three of my brothers around me. And they were leading me in prayer. They were leading me to words to say. And I'm so thankful for that. Yeah, but we can always pray Romans 10, 9 and 10. If we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth, Lord Jesus, that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So it's called on him, speaking from your heart, ask him to save you, ask him to forgive you. It's as simple as that. And I always like to add this too, as if, you have known the Lord, but you have. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a word called backsliding. There is a word called uh, growing cold or, or not being where you should be. Uh, and you know you need to be closer to the Lord. You can pray those words too. I need to be closer to you. I need to get back to you. I need to be restored. There's words you can pray, words you can say. And He's listening. He's a heavenly Father that cares for us. And He's listening. All people, but He expects us to do our part. Our part is to pray. Pray the prayer of faith. And he'll hear us. Well, and he will speak to us. So as they look like you're ready to sing, we'll pray at the altar. We'll pray at your seat wherever you're praying. If you're watching online, you can pray right where you're at. You pray and ask the Lord into your life. Everybody can hear this.
fame of the month. That's it. So, it's been like that for the last three or four weeks here. I keep on going. So. And, uh, I'm more apt to do something for somebody that stays closer to me than I am for somebody that sees me when they get down and out, you know. That's what God tried to tell me a minute ago. So I want everybody just to bow your heads for a minute. I'm trying to listen to what he wants me to do. You don't have to raise your hand, but if you think about what was spoken this morning from the very first song to where Brother Joe just ended, has something been sung, something been said, a testimony or something that has actually touched you this morning? Is there anything that was spoken or sung in this service today that you can take with you and grow on and, and apply it to your life? And that answer should be yes. And as we have our heads bowed real quick, let's just thank the Lord for what, you know, the, not just this service, but what He's doing in your life, in your life, in your life. You know, just, Lord, we're not going to dismiss quite yet, but I want to pray this prayer first. Lord, as we come to you this morning as a congregation, we thank you for what you're doing inside our lives. We thank you for the protections you've given us, the blessings you've given us. Lord, we also want to thank you for the words of encouragement you're given through the songs. You're given us through the words of the ministers and the words of our brothers and sisters, Lord. As we travel with each other, we go places and we just fellowship together, Lord. We just ask you to put people in our past, Lord, that we can witness to. Let them see the glory of you shine through us, Lord. In these dark times, Lord, we just know that you have something better for us. Lord, we just want to praise you and thank you. Amen. 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 All right, let's all stand and pray Brother Joe Clay. Pray the person. Joe, before you do that, uh, first of all, I apologize. I was supposed to say this earlier at the beginning of church, and I did. Uh, and I'm sorry for that. But uh, I'm just going to say I like when nobody Say. And so I didn't say it. And then when Carla's on the flag and Sissy said what she said, and then Joe said, don't be a slob. And then he said, your words are important. So every time those things were said, it's like, ooh, I should have stood up and done what I was supposed to do. So it may not be major to you, but it's very important to me. No, no, no. With the Ten Commandments being put back in Louisiana, and they're not just in every school, but they're in every classroom. And in Oklahoma, they're in every school, plus it's in the curriculum along with the Bible in the curriculum. Not ideology, but the Bible stories. So there's a gentleman, he does Patriot Point, and he has called Kentuckians to action. He just does Kentucky laws. Uh, he gets information at what the representative senators are talking about, what they're discussing, and it's, they've called us to action. I guess 7,700 followers in Kentucky, and he wants you to call your legislators and say, we want the commandments back in our classrooms. We want the Bible in our curriculum if you're led to do that. So there's an 800 number. I have that. Uh, his, he does Patriot News, and he's a Christian and a combat veteran. So, All right. It's, it's, it's due what we, uh, we learned this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's be blessed over afterwards. Father in heaven, Lord, the, heaven, the God of heaven and earth, we thank you so much that we get the privilege talking to you and you talking to us in that relationship. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the power of prayer. Thank you for my brothers and sisters, Lord. Each and every one's made their choice to be here. Each and every one, Lord, will be watching whether they watch the live stream or they're watching at a later time. Father, stir our hearts. 
let us know exactly what we have need of. And Lord, when we pray, Lord, let us pray and, and, and be able to approach you and, and to know, Lord, that you hear us and, that, and to know, Lord, that you're going to answer and give us what we have need of because you care for us. And Lord, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for the word and song, everything that was said and done today. And Lord, we just ask you to give us back at your point in time. Watch over us, protect us, lead us, and guide us. And we won't give you your praise, honor, and glory that you so deserve. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. May give you peace. In the name that's above every name, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, our Lord say we pray. In the body of Christ, say Amen. 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 Amen.